Hey, good morning, everybody. The Rev here. Time for a cup of coffee with Jesus in my Holy Thunder mug this morning. Some more like, good uh, uh, scars and stripes down range and some good coffee. Did it in a French press this morning. Good idea this morning, Rev. I'm sitting here reading the word a little bit. Sunday morning, getting ready to go to church. I, uh, <laughs> Lord is just so good. He's got, uh, good intentions for you. And I just, uh, I read this scripture. Oh, I'll read it here in just a second. I read this scripture and it's about life's distractions and keeping focused. And I, I just, man, the world will just keep beating you down with every distraction known to man. Smoke screens, smoke and mirrors. I mean, it is, it, the enemy is good at his job. He's good at trying to defeat you. He's good at trying to defeat me. He's good at trying to tear the church apart. He's good at what he does, but we can't let him be good because he's not. He needs to be bad at his job because he's bad and God's good. Simple as that. This is out of the Passion Translation. I know, I know. You probably shouldn't be the reading the Passion Translation. Look. I read all the, I never just go off of the Passion Translation alone. But sometimes the wording that they use, the vernacular in it, is pretty appropriate. Just telling you. Just saying. I, I, I understand. I, there's been people who have told me, you shouldn't just use the Passion Translation. I don't, okay? Just like, my name is Matt. I don't think I'm Jesus. It's sitting down and having a cup of coffee as if to have it with Jesus. Okay? Never said I'm Jesus. This is how these churches get bashed because people take one little phrase that you say and take it completely out of context. So I get the passion translation and no, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> I shouldn't have to explain this, but I feel like I have to make disclaimers from time to time. So this morning, uh, this is Proverbs four, uh, verse 25. And it says, set your gaze on the path before you. With fixed purpose, looking straight ahead, ignore life's distractions. It's not saying that you have to like ignore them like don't exist and you don't have to do things about, you know, when you have a plumbing leak in your house, when you have uh, a windstorm hit your house on Father's Day and you have about... 35 trees that are ripped to shreds and big ones uprooted and half your shingles ripped off your roof. Those are those are things that happen. And guess what? You know what? In my life this year, that was a big distraction. Took a lot of time, took a lot of effort to clean it up. I'm still cleaning up on the back part of my property. Seems like it's never ending. But you know what? What the word is saying here is like you can't let those distractions define what's going on in your life. You can't let a distraction overcome you and let it be all your focus. You're supposed to keep your eyes ahead and keep it on your purpose, right? Because everybody has a plan and a purpose. So don't let life's distractions interrupt what God has planned for you. It may delay things just a little bit, but those things can't become the focus. You get it? It can't become the focus. It can't become your focal point. So, I'm just telling you, God's good. And he is good all the time. God good, devil bad. I'm mad, not Jesus. Drink good coffee. Sit down with the word. Simple things in life to not be distracted by the circumstances around our life. Circumstances will always be there, okay? But God's always good. He's still on the throne. He's not surprised by the things that happen. He is not overcome by evil. But we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, even unto death. Because we have the ability. Life circumstances don't have to define what's going on. Keep focused. Keep going. You're great. Jesus loves you. I love you. Nothing you can do about it. Go have a good day with purpose and focus on what God has for you. I will see you soon. Goodbye.